Oh, bow, chicka, wow, wow. Y'all, listen, let me just put this phone over here on D and D. Do not disturb so that this phone don't get to ring. Because you know the phone is only going to ring because I am right here with you all. Okay, so the phone is on do not disturb. So, all right, let's <clears throat> let's get cracking. Hey, good evening. Hey, good people. Hey, good people. I see you. It's me. That thing say it's me. Plain and simple. It's me. Rocket, you did not come to play. You did not come to play. I see you said my girl says she gonna be on the seven, so I'm gonna be there and I'm gonna be ready to go at seven. But hold up, hold up, Rocket. I gotta do the thing. I gotta do the thing. Thank you so much for sharing. Hold on, I gotta do the thing that you showed me how to do on yesterday. Come on now. Um, let's see. So we gonna we gonna do the mirror. Hold up. All right. <laughs> I was able to uh, flip me around and um, hold on, what's what we got going on over here? A little wardrobe malfunction. That way, all of my alphabets are facing how they're supposed to face, even if my apron is not uh, working. So, yes, let me say it again. Good evening, good people. Good evening. Welcome to um, After. After work with Lola, we that's what we're gonna call this. After work with Lola, it is a different moment, it is a different experience because I've been out in these streets and now I'm home. I'm here with you guys, and um, it has been a day on that nine to five. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm just laying um here before work, leaving at 7 30 p.m. What? Oh, that's right. We do have a different time zone, don't we? Well, let's we're gonna get into it. I'm going I'm going to try not to be in these here TikTok streets until um, 9.30. 7 and 9.30 on a live is just forever and ever, okay? So let's let's try not to do that uh, tonight while we talk about our um, fall gardening. I just need to pull up my other, um, my admin page to make sure I am um, in the live. Here we go. All right, so good evening. Hey, hey, it's me. What's your what's your growing zone? What's your growing zone? Oh, you already want to talk to talk. You you got to warm a girl up first, you know. Come on, hey girl, how you doing? <laughs> I love it. Um, it's me. We're going to um get into it. Y'all see that right there? I'm a sweaty girl. Y'all, I don't know. I see it. Y'all may not see it. I see it. I'm a sweaty girl. So let's let's do some introductions. It's me. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. My friend Rocket is here. Oh, y'all gave me a little horror. <laughs> I like it. Oh, and um, OG McCoy, thank you so much for that. Um, I, we um we had our chance to talk on yesterday where I showed you all how to uh do a tincture to make a tincture right out of uh of using oregano and also we did stevia together uh last night on the live which was really fun and real easy real simple right so we're back tonight and we decided yesterday that we want to talk about how to set up our fall garden so if this is our first time meeting my name is Lola so make sure y'all say hey tell me who you are and be like hey in the comments I want to know who you are. <laughs> hey, so um, I am a uh, container gardener. I grow 95% of my food in containers outside on my deck, which is over here, and also on the um, the front porch. I do have um, a raised bed where I experiment, but because I live in kind of a small space, I don't plan to always live here in a small space, so I experiment in the raised bed because I hope to be able to grow in ground one day. This year on in the raised bed, I have corn and squash and beans using the Three Sisters method. Hey, what? Shalitha, I didn't know that. That's beautiful. Uh, not just because part of your name is my name, but hey, Shalitha from Texas. <laughs> hey, Mary Jane, how are you doing? Good evening. Welcome, Sandy. Welcome to uh, the show. The The Lola has been up since 4 a.m. and she 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 went to work out in these in these in these government streets and is she back home but she came to say hey to her people hey mj and we are going to get our fall garden together we're going to discuss a few things tonight we want to talk about um what you can get growing this fall 
um, we want to talk about your grow zone because depending on where you live will determine what you plant and when you can plant it. All right. Um, Rocket has been really amazing. MJ, y'all, um, uh, my case by case, M I call her MJ. That's MJ. That's my sweetheart. She lives in Texas. So I know she is dealing with that Texas heat, not being kind to uh, your plants. So <laughs> what are you putting... Um, and for the fall, I'm going to show you that. We're going to talk about what you can plant across your different zones. We'll give a couple of examples tonight, right? And then I am going to actually get some seeds started indoors with you. I'm going to show you what some of the things that I'm planting tonight and show you how you can start your seeds indoors as well and um, get you started and prepared for your fall garden. One of the biggest questions I get all the time is like, Lola, where can I grow and when can I grow it? And one of the biggest mistakes people make is growing the wrong thing in the wrong season, in the wrong area. They need sun and they grow it in shade or they grow it in the wrong container size. There's so many things that go wrong when people be like, I kill my plant, I have a black thumb. No, you don't. You just you just didn't know what to do. So let's make sure you know exactly what to do so that you can have success and not waste your money. And you can have those those good greens by the time uh the holidays come in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You want to pull your fresh greens out the garden? You can do it. You want to pull your fresh cabbage? We're going to make sure that you can do it. North Carolina, welcome. My oh my gosh, my watermelon is not doing good. And see, I hear I get that question a lot like um they say, I hear people say, what did I do wrong? Or um, uh, I killed my, my mint or I killed my squash. It just didn't work and I quit. And it could be a couple of reasons. And we have to really investigate the garden and see what's going on with our, our babies and pay attention to them because they're shooting off signals, right? We just got to read the message. So the first thing you got to, see, we're not even supposed to be talking about that. Hey, Connecticut. Hey, Minnie. Minnie is from Connecticut. I didn't know you were up north from me. Um, welcome. There's a couple of things that you would have to examine to troubleshoot exactly what's going on. It could be the soil, right? Did you put it in the right type of soil? Um, it could be the container or the ground. Did you did you plant it in, in the right place? Does it have enough space to grow, right? It could be um, you water too much. It could be you didn't water enough. It could be what you fed it or what you didn't feed it. Um, it could be the schedule by which you fed it. It could be disease has set in. It could be um, it's in the sun when it should be in the shade or it's in the shade when it should be in the sun. Um, it could be that it's planted with the wrong things. Like sometimes we put too much in the wrong space. So we have to really investigate and find out what's going on. You use the pool? Go ahead. I like it. I like it a lot. I love uh, creative uh, ideas and, and methods to growing your food. It's like by all, any means necessary I hear because I'm tired of the grocery store giving me salmonella. Okay. I'm tired of the recalls. All right. Y'all Y'all need to stop that. Let me go ahead and grow what I can grow and what I can grow. So the benefit is I know what I put in my soil because I put it there, okay? I know how long it's been there because I put it there. I know who touched it and who breathed on it, okay? Right. And do no nasty things to it. You see what I'm saying? Because I grew it. Yes, it's okay. It's me. Um, I've been doing this for 13 years and I've had a lot of, of mistakes and failures. I'm going to make sure you don't do those. So let's get into it. I'm so glad you're here. Um, welcome. Thank you for um, tapping that screen and um, giving me some hearts because that tells me that you love what I'm talking about you, um, and you want other people to know about it. And when you tap that screen like this, right? Mm -hmm, hold on. When you tap that screen, mm -hmm, it's going to push me to the FYP page. Mm -hmm, it's going to boost my ratings and more people can grow. Y'all know what y'all did for me yesterday too? Okay. I'm going to tell y'all this and then we're going to get into it. All right. The thing y'all did for me yesterday, y'all actually helped me find my slogan for uh, for my, my garden component of my life. And the slogan uh, um, in my sign off is going to be, uh, you might not grow everything, but you can grow something. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Somebody was like, put it on a t-shirt and I'll buy it. I said, baby, I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. Okay. But that, but you can grow something. And that's the whole point of container gardening. You can grow something, even if you don't grow everything, right? Start somewhere. Start with your herbs. Start with your lettuce. Start with something, right? This is what I'm talking about. Hey, New York. Welcome to the show. All right. So we have 
two objectives tonight. We want to talk about what we can grow in our fall gardens, right? And I also want to show you how to start your seeds indoors. I'm sitting in front of my um, seed growing contraption. This is nothing but a baker's rack with some um, shop lights from the Home Depot. I've been using these for about seven years. Uh, so I had them seven, got them seven years ago for like 25 bucks at the Home Depot. Um, and I'm, I'm going to show it. Teresa, I love that quote too. I said it and someone was like, hey, that, that works. And I was like, it do, don't it? Like, I was like, hey, I like y'all. Hey, from California, welcome, Nicole. Um, what Do I have your state on here? Um, so let me see if I can do this, y'all. I'm, I'm new to this whole screen technology. I'm going to see if I can pull something up for you and share it on the screen. If I can't, then we'll just talk about it. I am a, um, I'm a teacher, right? Just by, by giftings and um, visuals work well so being able to um, we're all different types of learners right so being able to see certain things and um and make things life applicable is what i love to do so i don't have that option where i can pull something up which is fine um i was hoping i'd be able to show you what your various um grow zones look like based on but that's okay i'll do that in some of the videos i'll just start highlighting them i'll say hey if you're I've decided to do zone nine. This is what you can grow. Here's what you need to know. This is what you need to grow in the fall. So I'll do that for you um, after this. But I said that we would talk about um, at least uh, DC because I'm in zone seven. Zone seven. We would talk about Texas, which you all can start growing. And um, I also pulled up a little bit of California, y'all, which is a little bit interesting because Texas and California, y'all got some unique things going on. So I'm in zone seven, which is clear, right? On Washington, D.C., zone seven. When you go to California, California, you all are in zone five through 10B. Okay, five through 10B. Texas, you are six to 10. Six, that's, that's, that's the way the wave goes for you all. So you all are all over the map in the terms of when you can start growing certain things. I was like, why y'all got to have all this extraness going on? California and Texas. What's going on? Why y'all in, in all these different grow zones? I'm near D.C. and so going to do zone seven, right? Let's, I'm going to show you how to find out exact that exact question. So there is no guesswork. So if you look on the back of any, well, a majority of the seed packets, right? It's a mess. It is a mess, Nicole, but this is what we have. So on the back of your seed packet, right? Um, there is a calendar and it's, well, a map. And it says, what should I start planting? In my hand, I'm holding some uh, curly kale. So on a majority of your seed packets, this is what you'll see. And it's gonna tell you, if you live in some of these, these blue states, that's not blue and red, okay? Nothing political about that. Okay, if you live in this blue state, this is what you would plant. You would plant this particular um, seed in the month of April through June. So you see all of that, it looks like it goes Washington, California, across the Midwest, all the way over to the, uh, the northern northeast states you see that so if you live in those states then you would plant between april and june you would plate this particular seed now if you live in a yellow it tells you you would plant it at a different time um and so on to the orange and the red just google you better go ahead jungle queen lioness i love it with a rawr <laughs> You got the rawr. I see the rawr. <laughs> I love it. So that's one cheat for you. If you, if you ever forget, you can look on the back of the seed plant, like seed pack, and be like, hmm, should I be planting? But let me give you. Let me be a little more specific for you, okay? So here's what you want to do. Um, you want to go to almanac.com. If you forget this, this is fine. And it's pinned in one of my posts because people always ask this question, like, what can I grow? When can I grow? So I point you back to almanac.com. This is the farmer's almanac. This is best practices. Now, listen, you go to farmer's almanac and it give you a lot of information. Farmer's almanac is going to give you best practices. All right. 
there's always the exception to any rule that you'll hear right like you'll you'll hear people tell you i grow lemon trees in alaska in an igloo like i said there are exceptions to every rule okay if you say you growing lemon trees in alaska and in an igloo all right there are exceptions to every rule but farmer's almanac is going to give you best practices and i like for beginners because i am for beginners all right um to start there it's a wellspring of knowledge just like rocket if y'all see rocket in here rocket is the man okay he is a wellspring of knowledge that's how the, the old people say it i live in the middle of nowhere farmland <laughs> you want to grow um and when to start all right so you're going to go to almanac.com. All right, let's do it together. I'm, I'm going to do it for you. Um, almanac.com. All right, so we'll go to almanac.com, right? And then, um, hold on. Let me see if I can do this like this for you all. So you all don't have to leave. Then you got some little dots right here. Um, and I don't know if you can see that. All right, then we're going to hit the gardening tab, all right, come back Lola, the gardening tab, and then you'll see the planting date chart, all right? We're gonna click that. And then here's a beautiful thing that's gonna come up. It's gonna say, enter your location. Come on, girl, work with me lights, lights. And you're going to enter whatever your zip code is here. Somebody throw out a zip code for me, please. Somebody give me a zip code. Somebody give me a zip code. I'm going to enter your zip code here. The first zip code I see come up, I'm going to enter the zip code. All right. I'm just waiting for a zip code. I see seven, seven. Whoa. Zero. Two. Eight. All right. All right, that's the lucky number. All right, 77028. Let's see what comes up. That's Houston, Texas. Hey, Texas. <laughs> All right, 77028. That is the number. Now, um, hold on, let me remove that. All right, so this is what comes up on our screen. Let me move this out of the way. Maybe that'll help me some. All right, so this is what comes up on our screen. And it's going to tell you again, hold on, is that better? Okay, that's better. It's going to tell you what to plant. You see that first row? It says when to start your seeds indoors, right? That first row is when to start your seeds indoors. The second one shows you um, when to plant your seedlings and when to transplant them. And if you look up right beneath the app, what you do that for? We was talking. Thank you. Right beneath the address, you see where it says Houston, Port, Texas. All right, and then next to the, it's telling you exactly where you are based on your uh, your zip code. This is gonna tell you when to uh, start your seeds outdoors, when's the last day to plant them. All right, so um, based on Houston, Texas, you want to plant your beets March 15th outside. Bell peppers, you see, you, you all can plant bell peppers in September. I can't do that. I can't do that in D.C. It says you want to plant your broccoli out in October. I'm looking at this last column over here. Wow, you all have such a longer um, grow date than I do. September 29th is when you want to grow your carrots outdoors. Um, I'm reading that last row. September 29th is when you want to do your, your cauliflower. Um, your collards go outside in the ground September 29th. You all can still grow corn in September. Look at that. Wow. Wow. So if you ever forget, go to the, uh, wow, you all can still plant cucumbers in Houston, Texas in September. You all have a really long growing season for spring and what I would consider spring and summer vegetables. Um, oh, wow. So look, but look for you all. You see, it says March 15th is the when you should plant kale so it looks like wow so you all are a little opposite of me okay so this is where you're going to go to farmer's almanac to find your uh your schedule because everyone's is different right it's going to tell you when to plant 
um, and what to plant based on your actual zip code and your grow zone because everyone is different all right so the we're going to the fall in the fall we tend to plant our cool weather variety of plants or or cool tolerant plants they're cool tolerant right so some of those include your beets your carrots your turnips your radishes anybody eat radishes i don't mean to yuck your yum but anybody eat radish i don't eat no radishes all right it means you can grow your your cabbage your collards your kale all of your brassia your broccoli your cauliflowers are going to be the things that you want to grow during this time um your spinach your uh your, any of your lettuce varieties um and even potatoes can um go on the ground now mind you what i just read to you it was really specific to my zone when we just looked at houston texas houston texas you all can grow what where we would consider fall weather you all can still plant dag on peppers in the outside in in september what there's there's just no way there's just no way hey um kathy i see you i you know when um my students raise their hand they be like i see i say i see your hand i see your hand kathy gave me 20706 let's see let's see where what zip code oh that's around the corner i knew that was 207 it was something familiar so kathy you you in my area you are in lanham maryland lanham lanham maryland so let's take a look yours is very specific just like mine oh, let me get that light out the way so you got arugula that you can start planting out in september um basil you can do uh it says uh, the last time you want to do bell peppers is July 24th, broccoli August 14th, Brussels sprouts July 10th. You want to get those outside and in the ground. Cabbage July 3rd. You still have time. Don't worry about that, sweetie. Um, remember, I told you these are best practices and there are exceptions to uh, the rule. Carrots go out in August the 7th. Cauliflower, celery, chives, mm -hmm. collards go out in August. Uh, you call it's going to go out in August. You're going to have a nice harvest for the holidays, my friend. Uh, eggplants. We can still plant eggplants August the 7th. My, 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 my. Uh, let's see. Y'all know. Hold on. Oh. You can do okra as late as August the 7th. You can set your onion sets out. Your oregano goes out August the 7th. Yes. Parsley, you can still do up to July 31st. Um, your potatoes, you can start planting potatoes on August the 7th from seed, seed potatoes, and those will be um, ready to, wow, radishes, mm, okay, rosemary, you can still do in August, so you have options um, over here in Lanham, turnips as late as September the 18th. Um, watermelon for us is done in July as far as planting seeds. And in August, as late as August, you can do like a winter squash in August the 14th. And it's just that simple. Go to um, Farmer's farmers Almanac so you can know exactly what to plant based on your, uh, your area. If you go to Farmer's Almanac, you put in your zip code, it's going to pull up your your specific area and it's going to tell you what to plant and when to plant it that way you don't grow out of season and you turn around and you say well i didn't know why my peppers didn't grow because you you planted them in in november that wasn't the best time for your growth area or you planted them in april and it's like wonk wonk i'm not going to um survive you're very welcome <laughs> you know so plants are they're not finicky or temperamental we just got to know what they're saying to us so almanac.com is going to give you some best practices but like i said there are some exceptions to um to to every rule every rule okay thank you and they send you emails that's awesome that's all right kathy we was all new to this one time one time when i first started kathy look can i just tell you i grew in one of those um trays that you really should grow uh flowers in i had a pepper plant bell pepper plant i had a collard and a tomato all oh, and i promise you it wasn't no bigger than this it wasn't no longer than this right here i didn't know 
And so I grew all of my plants together, not knowing, and I was very disappointed. I could see the little, the little uh, fruit would come up on it and baby would die. Like, why is my stuff dying? Like, <laughs> it can't be any harder than giving these things some water, some sun, and some food. What is the problem? Tell them about Clyde's Garden Planner. It's great for newbie. So I told y'all, Rocket is a wellspring of knowledge, okay? Follow him, follow him. See, because I don't know about Clyde's. I don't know about Clyde's. But you know what, um, Mary, look it up and show them. Okay. Um, Mary Jane, um, there's two Mary Janes on here. Um, hold on, let me show you. Y'all, if y'all hear my husband, it's, it's just my husband, okay? Hold on. So Clyde's Garden Planner. It's just my husband. Um, it's okay. He's going to say, I didn't know you was on live. But I think, I think he just, I'm whispering again like I was yesterday. He's going to say, I didn't know you was on live. But I think he just, he just liked to be in it. Clyde's, <laughs> Clyde's Garden. Okay, Clyde's Garden. Let's see. Rocket has given us a resource. Clyde's Garden Planner. That thing just popped up. It's on Amazon. All right. Let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, wow. Now, I'm, I'm a visual learner, y'all. Um... And so, I don't know, did y'all get a chance to, hold on. I don't think this is what you want me to see. Hold on, hold on. You said it's on Amazon. Hold on, y'all, I'm looking. Do, 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 do. Oh, that's what you want me to see? Okay. Oh, it is? Okay. Did anybody else pull this up? Okay. Don't do that. It's me. You laughing at me? <laughs> it's me. We need to be friends. Okay. Okay, so this is this is busy. This is definitely a busy chart. Um, I need to let's see. I'm zooming. I need a zoomed in image. It won't let me zoom into it in any of these images that I pulled up. Oh, oh wait. Okay. Do I need my glasses, y'all? Am I? Hold on. Oh yeah. Y'all, it's not. It's not gonna. It's giving me this little bitty. Um, it won't let me really zoom into any way that um, I try and to let you all see it. So you all take a look at um, Clyde's Garden Planner when you get a chance. And the good thing I will say, it is on Amazon, but there are a lot of um, images here that will let you take take a look at what it is. It provides indoor and outdoor vegetable planting times for spring and fall. All right. So it's a it is a summary or one big visual of what I just told us about or told you all about. And I had some, I had some guys that I wanted to pull up on the screen, but I just, y'all, I'm so sorry. I couldn't figure out how to navigate, um, these, these systems. Let me show me, show me, show you what one of them looked like. So this is, this is kind of the zone seven that I wanted to show you. And it's more versus the, uh, the written script it's just one big image and it shows you when to plant outdoors and when you can expect to to harvest so when i do i'm gonna do um a couple of the videos i have time tomorrow right say hey zone seven um this is what you want to plant for the fall i'll have put that calendar on there that visible visual um, so that you can screenshot it and have it based on the zone that you live in. It's going to show you when to start your seeds indoors, when to put your seedlings outdoors, and when to harvest based on your zone. And it gives one big visual of everything that I explained, which I find incredibly helpful. Because it's like, okay, my mind is not... That's why when I look at class and I saw all these arrows, I was like, wait, what happened? It, it was it visually went boom so i just need to look at it to um understand it so it did look really really good um that's supposed to be a uh, a sliding chart i believe it okay that makes sense that makes perfect sense that makes perfect sense <laughs> susie <laughs> when i first started i said um welcome to lola after work because i got up at 4 a.m i went to work and i came home and i started this live at seven 
Like, I don't have it together. Baby, I'm faking it to make it. But if you see some good, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm trying to get it together. So, um, some of the cool weather plants um, that we're planting here in Zone 7, which is in Washington, D.C., and also in some of the surrounding areas. And also, let me see, who, who do I have something in common with? Well, it all depends on the plant variety, so, so that doesn't matter. So, let me show you what I've planted so far indoors, all right? Um, cause in, in zone seven, specifically in the Washington DC region, DMV area, um, I can plant beets, carrots, turnips, radishes, cabbage, collard, kale, spinach, Swiss chard, arugula, broccoli, cauliflower, and potatoes. Those are the best practices based on the farmer's almanac, which I tend to follow. And I do recommend for, um, newbies to follow. You go to almanac.com. Um, planting calendar garden planting calendar put your zip code in it's going to tell you exactly what to plant this is what it tells me to plant and so that's what I'm going to plant and where I, I found um, success so as we go into the fall right I'm not going to plant um, any uh, peppers but baby when it comes time for uh, the Thanksgiving time gathering of the family and the friends that kale is going to be popping. I'm going to harvest it right out the garden. It's going to be beautiful. It's going to be amazing. And it's going to be um, fresh. Rocket, I just want to say, um, I know that it's probably almost your time. Thank you for the wellspring of knowledge that you bring and um, just helping us and um, giving all the different nuggets. Thank you for tagging me and different things. You are amazing. All right. Oh, I'm supposed to show y'all what I have planted. See, I knew you was Rocket. How come every time I talk about something, you didn't already put it in the comments? I told you that last night. We need to stop that. I don't know. My husband downstairs. Well, why, why are you in sync with me? <laughs> All right. Let me show you. Okay. So behind me is my uh, seed growing station, right? So I plant my seeds indoors in the spring um, in January and I put them out uh, in may and april then i also do another batch where i plant my seeds indoors in july and i put them out um august september which is what i'm getting ready to do all this this is a baker's rack all right and these are some shock grow lights this is all i use to this is my fancy fancy uh system <laughs> oh did i mention i'm very intuitive as well clearly Clearly you are. Stop it before I report you. I don't know who I'm gonna report you to. So that this is all I use. So when I put this uh, seed tray on the, after I plant my seeds and I put them under the grow lights, they are like this close to the lights, okay? I can't keep them all the way down here this isn't the tray. You can't see the station that's down there. It's a little too low. But I keep them really close to the light um, for when they come up. They don't necessarily need light to germinate. Not all of them need light to germinate. But when they come up, what happens is you'll find that your, your seedlings will begin to reach, 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 reach for the light, the sun. They are looking for the sun. And if it's not there, then they just keep reaching, 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 and they become entirely too leggy. And your plants are like this. And, and, they, and, they, and they can't support the leaves that they need to hold up in, in the future. The other thing I'm going to tell you is that when you begin to grow your seedlings, just rough them up a little bit you, you, you got to rub your hands over them you, you know just toughen them up just you know they got to get used to being um in the elements so in the beginning of their journey you're just gonna rub your hands in the morning just take your hands and just rough them up to kind of toughen up that stem so they get used to hey i'm about to go out into the big world going out into the real world okay so yeah you're gonna face some winds okay so i'm gonna need you to be, be prepared you got to get ready to yes yes you need to get toughened up the other thing i do um if you can see right here is once i pot them up into their next stations in a, in a bigger pot i have a fan i'm going to blow the fan on them again that also helps toughen them up right and get ready for the winds and the different things that are going to happen once they get get out into the garden. So y'all not gonna be no punks. Y'all not gonna be no punks. Y'all gonna be ready for whatever they throw at you when you go out into the inclement weather. Then I'm gonna talk to them gently. You can do it. You got this. You're gonna grow. You're gonna give me great food. Okay. So this this is what you do. Okay. All right. So let me just go ahead and show you some of the seed packets. Uh, some of the things that oh let me show you what I have grown so far so this is about 38 38 uh, cells are in here 
um, 40 are in here. I did 38. I left one open so that I can put water in there. You want to water, make sure you water when you water, when you water these uh, plants. You want the water to be in the bottom and you want the um, your plants to take the water up from the bottom. You don't necessarily want to water overhead. Let me tell you why. When you water overhead, sometimes you'll find that you'll get mold. You'll get a little green algae will start growing. And if there's any um, fungus gnats or there's any fruit flies, they'll be drawn to this moisture and they'll want to sit on the soil. And they'll want to lay their uh, their little eggs and more will hatch and they'll begin to multiply. But when the top will stay stays dry, which is why the fan is also good, um, you're getting them they're getting their moisture from the bottom and as long as the roots are getting what they need then you are in a good space but you pretty much you want to keep the area um, dried out if you find that you get a little mold or um, if you see some green algae um, growing and it isn't dried or you see the little gnats flying around around it you want to let it dry out really good right Continue to water slowly from the bottom. Let it water from the bottom. Put a little bit of water in there. And then get you some cinnamon and just sprinkle it. Get you some cinnamon and sprinkle it um, on top of the soil. Uh, the gnats tend to not like that. The other thing you can do is get a little yellow sticky uh, gnat trap. And, and hopefully they'll get on the, the gnat trap. This is true with my houseplants, moles and gnats. Very good. Thank you so much for... Um, confirming that and sharing in the group. I like it. So um, the trays I got from Amazon. So just Google um, seed starting trays and they come in two parts. They come in two parts. I didn't tell y'all what I was growing there. They come in two parts. They come in um, the tray that holds the soil and the seeds. And then they come with, I'm sorry, three parts because it also comes with a, a dome. I don't use the dome. I don't need the dome. Um, the dome holds will hold some heat in and kind of give that greenhouse effect. But sometimes I find with that greenhouse effect, that's where my mold my mold comes from. So um, I just keep it it open. It's warm enough in the house. Seeds need to be about um, six. 75 degrees to um to germinate so it's pretty warm here the air conditioning vent is closed so i have not had a um problem with it no i don't eat microgreens i've only ever heard about them but i have never um eaten them okay let's see alicia thank you you know when you feel like you're failing people will tell you you're doing a good job i appreciate it <laughs> So, all right, so let's, let me show you, um, let me fill these up. I still didn't tell y'all what I was growing, did I? Let me, let me go back and tell you what I was growing. So I have a really good girlfriend that I talked into gardening and she's doing amazing. She's growing in containers too. So even though I have 40, uh, items in here, normally this would all be for me, right? But I got to share for her, with her. If, if I grow something and, and, and she don't have it, she's going to fight me. If I come up missing, her name is Mary Davis. She, she took me out. Okay. When, when I bought me grapes, I had to buy her grapes. Okay. Um, so anything I plant, I, I have to make sure she has some and I know what she likes. So I have to make sure she has enough to put into her containers. This is what friends do, right? Friends don't let friends don't grow food and don't help other friends grow their food. <laughs> Sunflowers and, um, radish microgreens. See, I don't know about those, those, those do radish microgreens taste like radishes. Cause I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how I would like that. Maybe I need to go to the, um, at the next farmer's market I go to, I'm gonna try them. I'm gonna try me some, 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 some microgreens, but I have not done it yet. Hmm. They do taste like radish. I don't know if I'm gonna like it then. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. I don't like, like peppery and delicious. I don't know that I'm gonna like it. I don't like radishes. Um, radishes, they make the, um, that's what cocktail sauce is made of, right? I don't, I don't like it. I don't like it. And you should also, good people, you should always grow what you like as well. But um, so here's what I'm growing um, so far. Lots of great information. Stick to the sunflower microgreens. I'm going to see if they have some at the market. You can do cilantro, broccoli, and everything, kale. I love it. So um, in this first tray, which grew nothing, I grew lettuce. Um, you don't necessarily need to do seed lettuce. I love to experiment and try different things, right? Because when you go to the store and you go to like the Home Depot and stuff like that, they already have them grown. So I always like to try it. My seeds did not germinate. Those seeds were old. So I'm not surprised. So um, also I have in here some mustard greens, some kale, uh, cabbage, 
more cabbage, broccoli. All of my broccoli uh, did not germinate. Cauliflower, only one cauliflower germinated in this whole tray. There are two to three seeds in each tray, which is why you should put two to three seeds because you never know what's going to germinate and what will not. And then in this last tray, I put um, broccoli. When I was doing this the other day, I was like, this is not enough because I'm going to want at least, I need to grow at least 15 broccoli, 15 kales alone. So um, there's only five in this tray and I don't know what I was thinking, but um yeah, I need to grow at least 15, 15 broccoli this year. I'm sorry, 15 kales. So I'm going to put that back under the lights. Um, try to bake the right and then do what? After I bake it, it's me. What am I what am I what am I supposed to do with it after I bake it? Hmm. How mm. Cause that's how I feel about um asparagus. People love asparagus. I just do not love asparagus. I could not get over the uh it just I don't know, it just wasn't flavorful for me wasn't tasty didn't give me that mm, I don't know, mm. so <laughs> all right so let me show you what i use so i am using a a seed starting mix this is my second favorite so this is a seed starting mix which is um also very important this is one of the the reasons why a lot of people they fail in their garden is because they use the um, wrong type of soil out outdoors they use a garden soil i've seen people dig up dirt from the ground put it into their container and attempt to grow their food in their uh containers that way that doesn't work well for your containers. Your containers need a mix of soil that has good drainage in it. So this particular so, um, seed starting mix is by Jiffy. I am not a sponsor. I'm not an affiliate. I did not get paid for this. And they ain't giving me no kickbacks, all right? So, um, so I use a Jiffy seed starting mix. This is my second favorite variety to use. It has peat moss, it has coconut core, um and it also has um vermiculite so these are the three powerhouse things to um get your seeds to have a um a good start but now when i start friends let me show you something all right i'm gonna have to raise y'all up a little bit let me come raise y'all up a little bit well no i don't need to raise you up let me do a little bit of tilting let me get fancy pants. Okay, so I put the soil in here, all right? Then I poured hot water all over it. And then I began to mix it up. The reason why I do that is because that bag has been sitting in a facility somewhere. And it's very possible, just like our rice and our flour, that there are bugs in the soil, right? That are only going to um, come alive once the air hits it and it gets exposed or it's been sitting. So I put boiling hot water in here, mix it up to kill off any gnats or any bugs that could possibly come and um, damage my my um, my plant later on. So let the hot water sit in there. Um, let it cool off before you put it into the tray or you're going to burn your little fingers. All right. All right. All right. So that's why we do what I do, the hot water. So only thing I'm going to do is just grab, I'm going to grab the soil and I'm going to fill the trays. Y'all, when I tell you um, this process, this part of the process is only taking as long as it is because Lola is talking, right? But typically this doesn't take any time whatsoever to to do so i'm just going to fill these cells all right come on in i'm going to fill these cells up and then we will put some seeds i'll show you some of the other things that i'm going to plant all right all right let's see Oh, y'all, I forgot to leave one open. I normally leave one open for for water. So let's, let's so I can water into the tray. Let me get that. Get my good soil back. All right. All right. I just want to make sure that we have it nice and not necessarily pressed in, but you know what happens when you fill your containers, right? And you start uh putting that water in, it's like, oh. How, how and why did that go down? Because um, you had some air pockets in there. So I just want to get those air pockets out and then we'll put some more in there. All right. Easy breezy, beautiful. Gardening time. All right. 
And then let's do the other side. What did you miss? Um, so I didn't mix the Jiffy Soil. What I did was I poured hot water onto uh, the seed Jiffy Seed Starting Mix. I did pour hot water on it in order to kill any bugs that might be be living in there that might come up once the air hits it or because I just opened up a fresh bag because you know y'all like why y'all let me do it again why y'all let me fill up that hole again why y'all let me fill up that hole again y'all supposed to say Lola don't forget hold on okay let me get that this is the one I want to pour the water in all right so that part is done Set the over there. All right, so now that we have filled our tray, right, let's do 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 get on in there. All right, so easy breezy. So, what are we planting? Do you suggest a heat mat? So, I, I, I don't suggest the heat mat. Um, unless you need to bring the room up to temperature for what we're doing today. So if you're in a cold, if it's in a cold room, like a, a cold, dark basement, you might need a little heat in order to get it going, right? But for where my plants sit, I don't need them um, heat and it sits close enough to the light. So you wanna make sure that the, the room temperature is about 67. Thank y'all so much for the likes. Um, 67, well, let's say 70 degrees and above in order for you to get the, um, the good germination. My entire house is cold. <laughs> Cause you got that air bumping. <laughs> Like, mom, you got that air pumping. I know you do. All right, so this is this is the lesson I learned um, last time I did this on live. So let's let's talk about what I'm going to plant uh, in this particular tray. All right, so I'm going to do the curly kale. This is for uh, my good girlfriend. She likes a curly kale variety. Okay, she old school. I like to try different some different varieties. Okay, but she like what she like. And because I don't want to come up missing, I'm going to give her a uh, kale. This is a dwarf blue curled. This is typically what you see in your um, your grocery store. I'm thinking, where in the house can I set this up? Listen. Um. So this is a uh, this is. So at any given time, depending on the season, whatever I'm planting, because sometimes, well, a lot of times I give away. Um, one year I sold um, a lot for people who were just getting started in my area. Um, I wasn't mailing anything. People could like during the pandemic, you could come by and get some. So I had this whole thing going. I had one, two, one, two, three trays uh, shelves going. So you don't necessarily need something this big. Um, what can I show them, Lord? Where did I put it? Hold on. Okay, so mm, I'm visual, so I really want to show it to you. So there is a light. I, I can't. You you when I when I get ready to show it to you, you might be able to see it in your mind's eye. So this can sit like on any any little table, okay? And there is a a light. A grow light specifically for growing your food right it has like you know those multiple lights the blue the purple you know that that light thing 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 magic okay so they have these the grow lights and there's a clamp right there's a big fat clamp like like my fan and let me turn this around and so you can clamp it onto uh, where, your table or anything like that right clamp it onto your table right and and the way the prong the way the prongs go, they they can reach over to your plant, and you can do it that way. At Walmart, I don't know what the thing thing is called. Um, you yes, you can set it outside on the table, but for your new plants, right? Your new seedlings that are not um, used to that, and if it's intense direct sun, right? Make sure you have them a little bit shaded, right? So that they don't get over too overwhelmed quickly because they're in the trays. If they were in the ground, you know, okay, but just make sure they have a little bit of um, shade. Timu has those lamps. And you know what I'm talking about, right, Black Mamba? I have one um, 
but it's in the garage i just i just really wanted to show it to you so even if you don't have this whole setup that's fine i started off with the uh the grow lights before i had the shop lights all right so um so the first item is light like lights on arms yes like looking real uh matrixy like yes i can't think of a name either it'll come it'll come back so so i'm going to put in this tray some curly kale but baby let me show what i bought let me show you what i bought friend which i'm so excited about um so i'm trying um two different kinds of kale so this is a walking it's called the walking stick do you see how big that thing is gonna get i'm gonna have to plant this in a container up against the house look at that i want my thing to grow that big oh oh yes that's what i said play mom yes good lordy wow so i'm going to plant this one and then listen I don't know how I don't have any collars, but I'm going to have to find me some collars. And I wasn't thinking about collars because I love collars too. But look at this one. Kale, thousand head. Y'all see where I got them from? Baker's Creek, okay? Thousand head. Look how big that kale. So this kale is designed to be um, huge. Now, this is a kale, y'all. You know, there are like over, what is it? Over 22 varieties of kale, which I didn't know yes that's i was like this this it looked just like a collar don't it but this is called kale so i learned that there are um i've tried uh red russian kale i've tried um a kale that kind of looks like a mustard green um uh, that's look, it's looking like a mini palm leaf yes it does and i can't wait to try it and see how it goes so for this fall I'm, I'm using at least five dollar tree baskets to grow i don't think i'm gonna grow this one in there but because of how big these are i feel like it's gonna be my container i think i'm growing them in 10 gallon containers fabric bags because i feel like them roots are gonna say listen i need room so i'm definitely i want to get my hands on that purple Ooh, i haven't seen a purple collar I, I need to tell a, a purple collared. I need to get that purple collared. I need to find that. Pur Ooh, is that like purple cabbage? Ooh, don't do that. Okay, and this then um, I'm also going to do some mustard. I just I decided just to go big. These 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 three are some bigums. These three just are some bigums. So clearly, I want the big the big big this this. I'm feeling like I'm, I need the big, big stuff this year. But these are all, well, except for the mustard greens. These two are kale. And then this is the kale, the curly kale, the one we're used to. This is the one we typically see in the store. Like, right? But I really want to try these others. So if, if I'm buying seeds, it's because I want to try a different variety. We're going big this, this, this fall. I'm, I'm feeling good about it too, right? My mom always gets mustard greens to make, um, what's the sag? Hold on, but she gets mustard greens to make, um, I, I like, um, mustard greens. I make them like, I use, do spinach, like in a pan. Like, like that's how I tend to make my mustard greens and also my, uh, my Chinese cabbage, which I don't have this fall. I'll make sure I have that in the spring. I love growing um, Chinese cabbage as well. New things, new things are exciting. It's creamed greens from India. Ooh, ooh. So, the the correct an answer for how long do seeds last is eighteen months. They have a a, a, a viability of of eighteen months. 18 months however um if you if you keep them right and you plant them and they go longer than that then their viability begins to go down like what i mean is in year one when you began to you first get your seeds right hold on all the information is at the top so i want to cut this one from the bottom i want to open this from i want y'all not doing right 
oh, this one did something different. Let me show y'all this. So let me finish this thought. So um, in, in the second year that you've had, had your seed packet, right, you'll find that the viability has gone down. In the first year, let's say that you'll get a germination of 90% of the seeds that you plant or 95% of the seeds you planted that came right up. Boom, 95% successful. They germinated, right? Um, in the second year, that will go down to maybe 75% of the seeds that you ger will, will germinate. So each year, it loses its viability. So the right answer or the boilerplate answer is they last a good 18 months, but you can still, um, you can still use them and see what happens, which is why we plant two to three uh, seeds per sale to see what will germinate, right? Just in case something doesn't happen. Um, cayenne pepper, sometimes cinnamon powder, powder I use. Rocky, what was the question? How do you keep, oh, how do I keep the animals from eating my greens? So um, I don't really have animals in my area, unless you're talking about people who walk across the yard and take your stuff. Yeah, I've had those kind of animals. Um, but, um, thank you, Rocket. So, um, cinnamon powder and cayenne pepper, um, in terms of the only ones I've had to combat are the aphids and the cabbage moth. So when it comes to any of my kale and my brassias, uh, my, any of my brassias, my kale, my collard, my cabbage, and my lettuce, I cover it with the tool, uh, which I get from Ikea. I get a tool Ikea curtain comes two in a pack for $5.99 and I cover it up so that they can't get to it. The thing to uh, get the ladybug, get the ladybugs, to get the aphids is I bought ladybugs and they take care of all of the aphids and I haven't had any problem. Thank you, I have tried the pepper. And the pepper didn't work for you when you did the pepper? Um, yeah. The only other thing is going to be to completely cover them up so that the animals can't get access to them. And even with that, like they can be tricky. Yes, the mesh cover is also um, very helpful. So this is what I want on, on this particular. So this is what I love about the seed packets. The information is here for, you, for us on the back. So it tells you, let me see. It tells you how they need full sun are they frost hardy yes they are they can handle the frost anything frost is when the temperatures come um 36 and below plant spacing they should be 12 inches apart you want to plant it one fourth inch in in the deep oh hornworms are the worst and they're ugly ideal temperature is between 55 and 70 and the sprout time it should take them five to eight days to germinate so when i put them in here it should take them five to eight days till we see them germinate. We see a little green life begin to pop up out of soil. So I love that about our seed packets is that very valuable information is there on the back. Um, if the birds are eating, uh, yes, a tool netting will help or bird netting will help. And you just want to make sure you don't want to just drape it over. Okay. You need to make sure that it's, it's elevated and not touching the... The plant so you're going to need to use either some um, PVC pipe some some stakes or something to make sure that it's raised above whatever you're trying to protect so that the birds um, are able to get it if you think that's uh, that the birds are eating okay so the first thing we're going to plant in this first row is going to be the mustard and oh I'm not strong hold on y'all hold on hold on because I did this the other day and I was like girl you you need to you need to cut that okay so important you need to label your things label your things because friend we forget we think we're going to remember but we forget okay listen i just told the people they got to label the stuff so this is mustard and we are going to put that in that first row so let me show y'all what they look like all right all right Let's see. Can y'all see the plate? Let's see. Oh, look at how small those are. Can y'all see how small those are? Don't lose the plate, Lola. Don't lose the plate. Don't don't tip too much. Do y'all see how small those are? All right. So let's get those into the the sale, right? So I'm gonna use normal. I'm just y'all. I sh I should do like that, but we just gonna we just gonna do 
Okay. And you see how many is in there? That's 50 million 11. I'm gonna put I'm putting three of the Mercer seeds per. So I think I'm putting three. Hold on now. Now, do y'all know I have 50 million 11 mustard seeds? There's no reason why my name, I wish y'all could see how many is in here. Let me show y'all how many is in here, y'all. Hold on. Y'all see how many seeds are in there? Look at how many seeds are in there. That is a lot of seeds. And each one of those represents a plant, a whole plant. And that's a lot of seeds. That's a lot of seeds. So if you lose some, that's okay. So that's the mustard. Let's take a look at, that's kale. No, that's mustard. Hold on, y'all. Let me put the little stick in there, okay? So we don't have no problems. Okay, thank you, Rocket. I appreciate you. Uh, let's go on to the thousand kale. <laughs> let's take a look at these seeds, all right? Yes, have a good night, Rocket. And these are all going to pretty much look the same, right? There are 50 million 11 in here. I can't believe how many. Um, did y'all see what I did? Um, hold on. This is the thousand because I didn't make my label. I should make my label first. So we're going to put um, anywhere from three seeds, two to three seeds. I'm putting three because I have so many. Um, three seeds in there. And bada bing, bada bang. Now I need to label it because if not, we're going to have a whole problem. And it's going to be like, mm, it's a surprise garden. Okay, I did better that time. So this is the thousand, the thousand head, y'all. I can't wait. And then um, when these finish growing, I'm going to save these seeds. I'm going to save these seeds and I'll have fresh seeds. And then that whole question about how long do seeds last? You don't even have to worry about it because you just keep constantly collecting seeds. These are seeds, these are seeds that I harvested from a kale back in 2021. So I grew them in 2020 in 2021. Um, once I let the kale go to flower, I collected all the seeds from it and I have 50 million 11 seeds in here. And each seed represents a whole plant and then a plant is going to give you how many leaves? Like, yo, it's amazing. So save, if there's any way to save your seed, you want to save your seed. Is it okay to start more seeds maybe a week um, later? So absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. It's perfectly fine to... Uh, do succession planting that's what's called succession planting um let me make my label for this one so absolute so that they grow in phases and you don't have to harvest them all at one time i hardly recommend it especially when you do like um tomatoes and cucumbers do them one to two weeks apart so that you don't have this big huge harvest um, and you don't know what to do with it. And then you end up giving all this food away because you can't eat it fast enough or process it fast, fast enough. So this is going to be, um, the walking kale. Let me do this y'all. So, so I don't get myself confused. So the seeds that I put in, I'm going to go ahead and just push them down. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and push those down into the soil. Make sure I'm not taking anything with me. Just going to go ahead and push them down into the soil. Thank you so much for the follow. I see y'all. I see y'all. I see y'all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to push these down into the soil. Thank you. All right. That way I know. And then I'm going to cover them up, cover them back up that I've already done that side, okay? Because I'm looking over here like, wait, did I did I put something over there when I know that I didn't? Okay, so this is the walking 
walking stick. I cannot wait to see. This is going to have to grow on the side of the house. Um, pickle them tomatoes and tomato sauce. Yes, that is uh, the perfect idea. And sometimes you just, the time will get away from you, right? Again, these pretty much look the same, exactly the same. So as the other kale, so we're going to put three in here. Y'all, I know I'm probably um, putting three, probably four and five uh, per block, which is fine because overseeding is what you want to do now just to make sure that you get the germination that you want. Because what if uh, a couple of these seeds are not viable and they don't have um, any life? So then we're just going to push them down. Um, it's not very, it's not very deep in the soil at all, y'all. So I'm not pushing them down far at all. I promise you I'm not. So I'm pushing it down, a little tap, tap, tap. And then we're just going to cover that up. Make sure it's nice and covered, nice and covered, nice and covered. All right. And the only thing left is going to be the dwarf curly kale. This is the one that we see in the grocery store typically, right? So let's go ahead and get this one. And hey, where, where are you going? Where are you going, buddy? Stay over there. I'm going to label this one before I put it in. And for whatever reason, I don't have any collards and I need to grow collards. So I'm going to come back and get them. Oh, I don't know. Oh, look. This is a different color. Did you notice how the other ones are, were dark? Hmm. Hmm. It's going to be interesting. So we're going to put three per sale. Three per sale. Mm, that looked like five, but okay. We're going to make it work. Mm. And then we put the remainder. Now, y'all, if I wasn't talking... You can see how fast this could go by. It doesn't take, a, it shouldn't take a lot of time. And then we're going to take our little pencil. We're going to push those down, push them down. They're not going very deep. Remember, you don't want to try and push them all the way to the bottom because you want them to be able, as soon as they come up to hit that light, it should only take these um, about eight to 10 days to germinate. No surprise because we have them labeled and bada bing, bada bang, boom. It's ready to go under the lights. It's ready to go under the lights. That's it. Try a small tray of microgreens. Thank y'all. Try our favorite veggies or herbs. I appreciate that. Um, I also got tagged um, yesterday in some um, some hibiscus, the hibiscus flower that we talked about um, last night. I can't wait to get that because next year I'm going to do a, uh, a pollinator's garden. And I cannot wait to be able to have uh, all of the pollinators like just frequent the yard and come so I don't have to do all this hand pollination because I'll be out there doing the Lord's work y'all because we don't have no we don't have a lot of pollinators because the uh, HOA sprays the the weeds sprays the weeds so it keeps them down all right so how do we do any other um questions let us know about the stevia Ooh, it's got that kill and can't wait for a hey, I forgot I was going to make a tiktok with my cram a hey, Listen, I'll wait for it. I'll be looking for it. Now, what I did see you do, Rocket, was because I was at work scrolling, right? I saw you do the AI. I was like, oh, young Rocket. <laughs> All right, good people. So, um, y'all remember, so we got one, two, three, four. I have room for one, two, three, four more. So, I'm going to come back and do um, probably some collars in these three. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's something else I want to do because we're going to plant our carrots with seeds outdoors. We're going to do our beets outdoors in, with seeds. We are going to do our, um, our, our spinach dark seeds outdoors. This is just going to allow me to get a jump start, and it's also going to allow me to share with other people. So remember, hey, strawberry fairy, when you get ready to do your fall garden, uh, you want to go to almanac.com, go to the calendar, uh, plant, planting calendar. It's going to allow you to put your zip code in. You'll put your zip code in and it's going to tell you what and exactly what to plant during this fall season. And it's based on where you live. So what I'm planting and getting ready to plant now in Washington, D.C. is not the same for someone in Houston, Texas. They have a longer um, grow, grow season. Hey, cowgirl. 
um, they have a longer grow, growing season than I do for their what we would consider spring and summer vegetables. So when they in, in Houston, they're able to when we, we looked earlier, they're able to still be planting peppers in September, like say what? I wish I would plant a hot pepper in September. It's not going to make it. By, by then, the cool weather is definitely um, setting in. So just make sure that you take a look at, at your specific grow area, which is one of the reasons why a lot of people don't have success is because they plant the wrong plant at the wrong time. Or they plant the right plant at the wrong time? How do I want to look at that? Um, why some seeds outside versus um, some inside? So some... Some plants need a running start and some don't. That's that's the best way to um, explain it. Some plants just do better uh, being stationary. They're like, I need wherever I'm going to start is where I'm going to be forever. Like, don't try and transplant me anywhere. They just don't do well in, in the transplant surgery, if you will. So uh, carrots don't like to be moved around. They're like, oh! I don't like it I don't like it and they won't survive okay whereas some other vegetables are a little more tolerant and they can handle the moving around that's the only only difference and also um, um, that is through you can go to your almanac farmers almanac.com like I just uh, um, told us how to do and it's going to tell you what's the best method for you to know when to do if to do seed starts indoors or to do them um, outdoors and the almanac.com is really the best practices and I love going there after gardening for 13 years it is one of the best places for us as newbies to begin because it just makes things visibly really really simple but if you go to almanac.com it's going to tell you exactly which ones to plant and over time you you kind of um remember and learn like you can plant seeds indoor your corn seeds indoors and transplant them but it's just best to uh start with seeds outdoors as well as squash you can do your, your squash outdoors but you know you go to the store and you see squash is grown already pre-grown for you you have a seedling right um, but it can also do really well just by planting it um, outside. For that, you have an option. Carrots, I wouldn't do that. Carrots, mm -mm, they are very finicky, so don't do that. What about watermelon? Can um, they start out in a container, then transplant it in the ground? They can. They absolutely can. But you can also, um, watermelon can handle being planted direct seed in, in, in your container. They can absolutely handle that. They absolutely can handle that. You're welcome, lioness. Grr. <laughs> Every time I see that that lion down there, I just want to go. Grr. Are you doing a video on potting your seedlings in your buckets? You know, I absolutely can. So I did a, I have a video that I probably need to repost. Um, I don't know if I posted it. Where I show you how to start a, a, con, a, a container. Like if you're starting with a five gallon paint bucket, how to put the holes in there and then how to put your soil in there. I absolutely do. So if you want me to repo if you want me to post that one, because I don't think I posted it, I can because I did start a video on how I started my peppers this year because I did them a little bit different this year. I did my peppers differently than I'd ever done them before. I did my tomatoes differently than I'd ever done them before. And this is the best year for my tomatoes. Tomatoes are my nemesis, okay? Um, everything does not go smoothly in the garden. This year, you can have like grow the most amazing tomatoes, right? And then next year, everything failed. You're like, what did I do wrong? Like, why? Is, what is this betrayal, right? Um, but this year, um, I think I realized and I figured out what I've been doing wrong with my tomatoes. And I think I hit the sweet spot because, baby, them tomatoes are tomato wing. They are tomato wing this year. For the first time in 13 years, they are tomato wing. Except for the first time I planted them. They did a really good job um, in year three of gardening. And I've never had that level of success until now. Oh, Katie, your tomatoes are struggling. I understand. Um, I have some plum seeds. Do you know the process of planting them? I've never done a plum seed before. That would be new um, for me. That is considered, um, I can't think of the word. I've never done a plum seed. I've never done an avocado seed. Those, I've only ever seen them done online, but I've never grown from them. So I wouldn't be the the S expertise on that do you share videos on how you process your your harvest 
are you talking about canning um, and dehydrating and how I make the oils and the tinctures? Um, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I do. Um, so the way I'm very strategic and things have to be in order for me to function a certain way most times. So in gardening, in, when it's gardening season, like right now, everything in this season right now is like <sighs> up in the air because I'm harvesting and I'm also preparing for the fall, right? So that's a lot going on on top of working, being the best wife I can, an amazing mom, amazing grandmother, a good daughter. You see what I'm saying? A good friend. <laughs> trying to keep the house clean you see what i'm saying and it's like chaos so i have to do things kind of um in an order so for me once i get these on the shelves and the the fall garden in my mind is kind of settled right it's it's just about time for me to start harvesting those tomatoes it's about time for me to harvest the string beans and honestly i don't think i'm going to have um, a whole lot. I'll be able to make some salsa. The uh, All of the garlic that I harvested is waiting for me. I did dehydrate all of the herbs already because that's like put in a dehydrator, put in the oven, walk away from it. Those are in jars right now. We did some tinctures last night. Those just pretty much need to be poured and labeled. So I'm doing these process. So I said all of that to say, yes, I'm going to come back around and show you the canning because when you have an abundance of food, I don't want us to waste it. I don't want us to be um, wasteful. And that's, um, that's a whole nother life skill. So yes, friend, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm going to show us how to can um, potatoes and string beans and carrots and corn, how to um, prepare a uh, a meal in the jar how to do your your soups for the winter because winter is coming do you have any game of throne friends winter is coming so we want to uh i want to teach you all how to do those things that make them uh shelf stable and ready for you throughout the winter like right now in the summer now is the time to buy all of your meats right because the grocery stores are expecting us to be grilling so they have all these meats on sale right so you take your meats you stock them up you put it in the freezer and once the fall garden and goes in then I'm going to start pulling those things out the freezer and we'll start processing those meats and putting them in jars why is that important let me tell you so in the event of an emergency uh, and you lose your refrigerator right or you lose your freezer and you frozen all this meat to store it for a rainy day and you don't have a generator but if you process your meats and it's in jars you'll still be able to have access to it. So not only do you want to have food in your freezer, but you also want to have some meats and meals in your jars um, stored in the cabinets. It's going to be um, a lifesaver. It's a life skill that you want to have to know the difference between um, water bath canning and pressure canning, um, what to pressure can, what to water bath, um, how to avoid botulism. So we're going to talk about all of that. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm definitely going to give it to you because I want you all to be stored up. So all this comes from um, when I first started this uh, platform over on IG, I was trying to like, kind of like talk about being a self-sufficient woman. You know, I'm every, I was trying to, you know, make sure that we, we could take care of business without having to reach out. You be the plug. I wanted you to be the plug, the resource. I wanted people to be able to come to you. I wanted you to be able to handle it. Okay. I wanted you to be able to stand and be sufficient. Like if this economy goes, uh, you can be like, oh, I'm sweet. I know how to grow my food. Oh, I, I got that on lock. Um, if your tire go out and you were in nowhere, like, do you know how to change the tire? My friend. You know what I'm saying? You know how to read a map? You know how to read a compass? Do you know how to get home? <laughs> so all of those things, um, is that is how I started my platform. Um, talking about those things, but gardening kind of just took over. And if you can imagine, it makes sense, like during the pandemic, like we were stuck in a house, like where are we going? So I started off um, talking about being self-sufficient, um, emergency preparedness, um, being able to buy a drill and use a drill. Don't be scared of the drill. Okay. Listen, they not the only ones that can use a drill. I don't like a saw, but I can use a drill. 
<laughs> okay? And yes, we need these life skills. These are much needed skills. And so I'm passing them on even now to my grandbabies. Um, I didn't do a great job with my kids. So, you know, I'm trying to go back now, these 30 year olds and, and tell them, hey, listen, what you mean you don't know how to do a drill? What you mean you don't know how to fix a door? What? what? You ain't got to call him. Hold on, I got you. You single. Come on, let's figure this out. Come on. We got this. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No problem. So this was fun. So we plan to, so tonight we talked about how, where to identify your grow zone, right? Um, go to almanac.com, put in your zip code during the planting calendar. It's, that planting calendar is going to tell you what to plant and based on your zip code, right? And when to plant it in this coming fall. It'll be able to help you identify what you can grow because what I grow in Washington, D.C. during the fall may not be what you grow in Texas, which is what we discovered tonight, right? And then the other thing is I showed you how to get your seeds started. Um, this is going to go on the shelf behind me and sit underneath my shop lights. If you don't have any shop lights get you one of those um lights from um the amazon or the walmart one of those grow lights that can hover closely over your tray you want them close one inch from the soil is where you want that light to be and then always one inch from the plant you don't need the dome it does need to be warm um if it's not warm you may need to use a heating mat but be careful it doesn't dry out your soil you do want your soil on top to dry out because that's where the gnats live if you find out your soil starts getting moldy or you find out your soil starts having all that some some green fuzz on it mm -hmm, um go pick it off pick it off right just pick it off right and then throw some cinnamon over it and make sure you keep it dry make sure you keep it dry right <laughs> so that that mold doesn't form or that algae doesn't form on the top thank you listen i'm trying anastasia you saying i got this energy i'm like lord i've been up since four o'clock this morning i went into the office and worked my good government job right and then i came here at 7 p.m eastern standard time and i did this live and i'm like i'm feeling a little um <laughs> around the edges <laughs> but you say I have this energy, but thank you. I'm glad I did not let it <laughs> um, close so your plants don't grow. That's right. You don't want them to grow leggy. Go ahead, cowgirl. That's right. You don't want them to grow leggy, which is why um, sometimes if we take our trays and we've been told to sit them out near um, a sunny door or a sunny window, and then those plants start growing and they're reaching for the sun and they can't quite get to the heat like they want to. So they just keep reaching and then they keep reaching and then they are um, they get leggy and they're falling over. They can't support their leaves. And so you, you kind of lose the whole tray. So you want to keep that light really close to your soil and then you want to keep it close to your plant as they begin to, um, to grow out. I learned from my mistakes too. I had no idea. And, and y'all, please understand that gardening is, it really is a life lesson the whole time. This is a journey and I'm giving you best practices. Almanac.com is going to give you best practices, but if it doesn't work, it's okay. If your plants don't um, survive and we're, I want to make sure that you have a really good solid chance of them surviving, um, learn from it. Don't do that again. Don't repeat it or whatever's working. You want to do that. Journal it. Write it down. Make a record of, okay, this plant likes this kind of food. Oh, this plant doesn't. Oh, this one likes nitrogen. Oh, this one hates nitrogen. Oh, this one likes sun. This one doesn't like sun. Just learn from it because again, one year you could have a bumper crop of collards and then the next year, wonk, wonk, could be the seed, could be the soil, could have been a fertilizer, could have been disease. It could be a couple of things. You just got to investigate. Listen to your plants. They're talking to you. They're talking to you. They're telling you what's going on. That discoloration, them yellow plant, them yellow leaves are talking to you. The, the powdery mildew on the leaves, they're talking to you. They're saying, hey, something is going on. Um, the black spots um, on your tomatoes, they're saying, hey, you know, we're missing something here. Something is, something is not right. So you just got to, you know, be sure to troubleshoot it. Watch them. Uh, vermin is always out to eat your stuff but it is a learning experience it is a journey you do got to be protective you do have to be watchful you got to go out there to your garden and check on it like hey no so the the new seeds they do not need any fertilizer at this point um 
they don't need any fertilizer. These won't get any fertilizer until their first true leaves begin to set in. And so they'll come up and they'll have two leaves that will come up, right? Initially, you'll get that first row and then there'll be a second row of leaves that come up. Once they have that second set of leaves, that's their true leaves. We're gonna put, I'm, I'm have them into a, a bigger container, the last container that they'll be in before they go outdoors. And then I'll give them just a very diluted diluted so they won't get the maximum amount of fertilizer that they'll typically get they'll get like one fourth of what they'll typically get because when they're very very young they don't need a whole lot of um fertilizer absolutely be sure to put your lights that's right no more than two inches away from that tray because then they will begin to to grow so i do recommend um lights when you do when you do your seed starts um made that fertilizer mistake nothing grew yeah they're, they're babies you know babies don't drink um uh cow milk now when you in the struggle baby can have a cow milk but we diluted it i don't know i don't know if y'all ever was in a struggle like that okay but uh they don't they don't they can't handle that type of milk so you give them um you dilute it and you only give them just a, a little bit is there a way to tell your ground soil is good yes there is you want to get a um a soil testing kit from um one of your big box stores amazon walmart get a soil testing kit and um have it tested and the good thing about the soil testing kit is it's going to tell you if your soil is viable it's going to tell you what's lacking what's missing and it may just be some things that you need to add to the soil to make it make it more viable absolutely so do a soil testing kit and have your soil tested any great gardener is going to tell you to do that um, the other option for you is if you don't want to grow directly in ground like for me i have clay all around all around you can do a raised bed that way you know um where your uh your roots are are going so do the test but then you can always do a raised bed put your garden soil and your nutrients right into a raised bed which is just you know the frame right get you some bags of soil and then just go from there the great thing about that um i have one raised bed and i have clay soil at this point because my bed has been down there for the last um 10 years um, the soil has um, broken down the clay and it's kind of uh, molded into, um, well, broken down the red clay. So my roots have been able to grow deep down um, through the broken down soil. But yes, please have your soil tested. If you're going to plant in ground, yes, please have your soil tested because we have like all types of runoff, chemical runoff is in our grounds. Um, you just You just never know what was there like many, many moons ago that may still be there, you know what I'm saying? You might have a UFO under that, you see what I'm saying? So go ahead and get it tested so you know what you are growing into. You have clay, see, yes, my first year of growing from seed. Um, we learn so much and the great thing is just keep going, just keep going. Please um, keep going, try again. Come back and be like, hey Lola, you know, um, and I'm also thinking about what do y'all think about doing some, um, I'm thinking about doing some maybe some garden audits because people always say I don't have space and so I'm like send me a picture of of your area like so I can or let's talk about what your area looks like or take a picture of your neighbor house you know what I'm saying it didn't look like yours or your whole apartment and I'm going to show you some different ways that uh, you or things that you can use as far container wise to grow because a lot of people say I have a small space I don't have enough space so I'm like hey you you can grow you may not grow everything, but you can grow something, right? That's our model, y'all. That's my new model. You may not grow everything, but you can grow something, <laughs> right? So you may need to grow in mason jars in the windowsill. Maybe you need to do a hanging planter in the windowsill. They have a lot of cute things that you can hang on a curtain frame, right? You can do um, a, a box and hang it outside the window. I had someone um the other day they said they were on a on a in, in a high building, right? Get you a um but they had a balcony and they had a little deck. Get you um a little pot that's gonna hold catch the water so that when you pour it don't run down on your neighbor's head. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to be creative. 
Yes, that's it. All we got to do, think about. It. And the other thing is, well, you can't see. I got the grandkids snatched up here. So I didn't, I didn't well, I, I hid that from y'all. I hid my mesh, okay? You can use the Aero Garden, um, indoor hydroponic system. Those are perfect for small space, no space, because they come in so many different sizes. Like, they are huge, but you definitely have options. Yes, I went, went window boxes are great. And again, you may not be able to grow corn in the window box, but you can grow some herbs. And depending on how big the window box is, you might be able to grow some patio tomatoes. Okay, so we have options. That's the great thing. You have options. You're not completely out just because you're renting space or just because you have a small space or not enough space or your dream space, okay? We're gonna work with the space that you have. I've been driving my crazy. Yes, hydroponic. That's just a fancy way of saying the water. It's just a water system. There's no soil. It's all water and feed. So the great thing about the hydroponic system is that the system tells you when to feed it. You get a little uh, little meter on it. it says feed me now. The flash is red. When the water goes down and it needs water, it flashes and says, I need more water. <laughs> and it grows right on your counter. I love it. That's how I grow indoors um, during the winter. I grow my herbs on the counter, fresh herbs, fresh lavender. Lavender has to be grown because every time I step in the kitchen, yes, I love it. Lettuce is grown during the winter times using the hydroponic system. <laughs> Wait, this thing said I went y'all. I was supposed to do my live for 60 minutes. This thing said I went live for 90 minutes and then take a break. Oh <gasps> the hydroponic lettuce was pretty good. I do too. I, I do too. Hold on. Veggies have a flavor. Yes, they really work. My favorite lettuce um is a butter crunch lettuce. So I grow it every uh fall in here on on the counter yes i grow lavender i grow my lettuce i grow my oregano y'all i just love fresh oregano I, I don't know why it's just it's just good good to my soul but it is pretty it is still tasty it tastes just like the uh the real deal it tastes very very fresh mm. Mm -hmm. but a crunch but a crunch thoughts on sprouts so I don't have any thoughts on the sprouts I've never done sprouts um, I've never done micro greens um, so I don't have a, um, a thought or an opinion on um, either one of those uh, many apologies for that I'm sorry I'm not the expert um, um, on the sprouts do you have thoughts on it have you ever grown them how do you feel about them are they something I really need to invest in like listen Lola you need to look at these sprouts because you're missing out is that how you feel about them let me know like am I missing out because they didn't tell me I'm missing out on the microgreens so I'm going to the farmer's market to get me some microgreens okay okay you have it okay I'm 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 open just not to radishes yes you can start your seedlings in your arrow garden they have a unique um attachment that you'll use to start your seeds indoors with the uh the arrow garden i will say this i don't know how they transplant outdoors just yet so with my seed my seedlings when we get ready to transplant them outdoors you know we um we kind of phase them in phase them out one day they go outside for an hour in a shaded area then I, I bring them back in right then the next day they go out for two hours and we do that until it's time for them to be outside so they can get used and acclimated to being outdoors i don't know how that works with the hydroponic i've never done it before in terms of taking them from a water-based um amendment into a soil base so i have not done that so that would be interesting to um uh, know microgreens are expensive in the store would you use hydro i've never grown microgreens which is why they suggested um I should try them so they told me they come in different flavors I'm not going to do the radish I was told sunflower is amazing so I'm not sure how the microgreens will do in a, a hydroponic system I've never done that one before never done that one before now listen y'all was supposed to check Lola at the 60 minute mark we next time I'm gonna put a little sign up here and say let me know <laughs> when an hour has come <laughs> 
<laughs> Let me know when the hours come because we've been on here for an hour and a half. So, um, oh, glory. So, don't forget the new model. The new motto is you may not grow everything, but you can definitely grow something. I hope that tonight was helpful, that you found out where to go to get your grow zone. You found out, uh, you'll be able to find out what to plant, when to plant it. And also we did our seed starting and I showed you how easy it is to put it into the tray and to label them. Make sure you label them and we're going to put them under our grow lights. And in about another uh, six weeks, this kale will be ready to be outdoors. And this kale, um, and the collards will be ready around about uh, Thanksgiving for all of our family gatherings. The cabbages will be ready. Um, probably, uh, what else? What else is gonna? Oh, once we get the fall garden in, then I can start talking to you guys about canning and processing. Um, but I'm going to post the videos over the next couple of days about your grow zone. So watch for those um, those videos. I'm going to tell you in your zone what you can plant, and I'm going to give you some good visuals so you can screenshot as a uh, as a reminder. But I'm so grateful you guys came out to hang out with me. I hope this was helpful. Again, if you have any questions, um, let me know, and we are going to do this uh, together because. I want to make sure after these 13 years that you don't make the mistakes that I did in the beginning because hey friend um I love peace um it's important for you to be successful when you garden I don't want you to give up um if you had a black thumb you're gonna have a green thumb by the um end of this okay so you all have a wonderful night when are we coming back so listen I feel like Tuesdays is a long day I feel like I need to keep us either on Monday or Wednesdays can we do Monday Wednesday Let's do Monday, Wednesday, because Monday, Wednesday, I'm at home. I work from home. Um, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, I go into the office. So going to see the people and then coming back, that's... And we, we, bye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so we're going to come back tomorrow. Um, What are we going to talk about tomorrow? What? We done talked about all the things. What do we need to talk about tomorrow? What do we need to know? Um, well, let me let me think on that. Let me let me look at some of the questions that I have not had a chance to answer in some of my um, feed. And I still think like the biggest question is, Lola, what can I plant? Nope. You know what I'm going to answer? You want to do canning tomorrow? Tomorrow, it's not canning season. Um, so we did, we prepared ourselves for the fall garden tonight. So, uh questions people may have so let's do um let's do how to how do i start the meat thing you really trying vanessa you really trying you really trying you really trying to give me the shift to can already You're trying to give me the shift to can so let's answer the question on how to start tomorrow let's look at how to start a five gallon um paint bucket <laughs> and uh, other different container items that we can use to grow our um, food in. So I'll talk about fabric bags. We'll talk about a uh, vertical, different uh, vertical um, stacking trays, hydroponic systems. So let's talk about that. Okay, so we have a plan. So I'll be back tomorrow. Y'all, can we do 6 p.m. instead of 7 p.m.? 7 p.m. is late. I know y'all like 7 p.m., can we do 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? Please tell me. Do y'all prefer 7 or 6 p.m.? 7 or 6 p.m.? 7 or 6 p.m.? Anastasia, I like you. You, you, you my friend. 6 p.m., y'all? Perfect, perfect. Lisa says 7. Of course. Okay. Okay, so I got a couple of 6s and then a 7. Okay, so we're going to do 6 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> I love it here. Um, I appreciate you guys. Um, you'll do your best. Okay. Um, okay. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll let's let's do um, six p.m. But it looks like we'll we'll still be here seven anyway. The way we like to go. <laughs> so tomorrow we'll come back and we'll talk about um, how to start your container, the different types of containers that and the variety of containers that are out there for us to be able to use to grow our food. All right. You sleep well too. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. Thank y'all so much. Bye bye. Oh, wait, I can't do that. Mm -mm -mm.